This demo video will show how you can use Box Implant Kit to automatically notify your customers over the phone. Let's use a realistic example. With the pandemic, many businesses have had to close or keep out hours. Businesses that depend on scheduled appointments often spend many hours calling customers to rebook their appointments. Let's see how Box Implant Kit can help to automate this process. This demo will show how to use Kit to automatically call a list of customers. It will let the customer know that our business, we'll call it Voxies, is open again. It will then ask if the customer wants to rebook their appointment. If they say yes, it will then transfer the call to a human agent for scheduling. Before we start, you should have a Vox Implant Kit account. Go to kit.voximplant.com to sign up for Vox Implant if you don't have an account already. Before we make any calls, we need to verify our caller ID. We can do this later, but we want to have a number ready for testing, so let's do it now. There are two ways to get a verified caller ID. One, you can purchase a number from Box Implant, or two, you can reuse an existing business phone number. We'll show the second option to reuse an existing number for this demo. Go to Numbers, Custom Caller IDs, and click on Add Number. Enter your number. You should receive a call in a moment that speaks a confirmation number. Your phone number activation code is 640. Enter this number to verify that you control that phone number. As I mentioned, alternatively, you can always purchase a new phone number from Vox Implant and use that as your caller ID. Now let's set up our campaign. As you can see here, Kit can handle inbound and outbound calls. Let's do outbound. Before you do anything, make sure to look at our existing templates. These make it even easier to get started. Box Implant is adding new templates all the time. We even have a quarantine notification template. For educational purposes, I'm going to start with a blank scenario just so you see how everything is put together. On the left here, you can see a number of blocks that we can choose from to handle different aspects of the call flow. Kit automatically places a few blocks for us here to start with. We can see a start scenario block. This goes to the outbound call block. This block actually initiates the outbound call. If we click on that, you can see a few options. For example, the voicemail detection can be used to automatically end the call if voicemail is detected, so we don't have a machine talking to a machine. If the dialing is successful, it goes to this text-to-speech block. Once the speech is played, it goes to the successful call block. The successful call block tells the auto-dialer that the call finished and the specified number should not be called again. Scenario end ends the program. We will take and reuse these blocks to develop our call flow. Before we start, I'm just going to rename the scenario to rebooking campaign to make it easier to find later. Now let's start out with a simple greeting to verify we're talking to the right person after the call is connected. To do that, let's first break the connection to the text-to-speech block. Then we can grab the interactive menu and connect the outbound call success output. The interactive menu allows a user to say or enter DTMF digits to trigger some outputs. In this case, we want to start by saying the user's name and getting a simple yes or no to confirm it's the right person. Just double click on the block to open it. I'm going to keep most of the settings the same here, but note you can change the language, voice, and configure D2MF input here too. Let's change the initial greeting text to hello, this is name surrounded by double brackets. The double brackets indicate a variable. I'll show how we populate this variable when we set up the campaign later. Let's add our yes and no responses. Click on add a response. To make this easier to follow, click on port one and change that to yes. Then we need to add some possible responses. We can enter values like yes, speaking here, hello, hi, yeah, and so on. Now we'll need to do the same to set up the no responses.
Next, there is an input area for handling when the speech recognizer doesn't understand what the user says, or if the user says nothing. We can just put a simple message here. Now, if we X out of that, we'll see our block. There's a slot from the user says yes, and one for no, and one for a failed response. Let's connect both the no and failed response to the text-to-speech block that's already there. We'll come back for the yes in a moment. If the callee says no, we want Kit to just say a simple message asking the callee to relay the message that our business is open. Double-click on the text-to-speech block and enter the following. I'll also rename this block to not there and click save. Now this block is already connected to the successful call block, so we don't need to change the block output. This means that we will not try to call that user again as part of this campaign, as long as we follow this path. If instead I did want to try calling this user again later, I could connect it to a scenario end block. Now let's hook up a second interactive menu to see if the customer would like to rebook. I'll open that and follow similar steps as the first menu with a yes and no option. Now we need to hook up the output ports to a few TTS prompts. We'll duplicate the not there prompt and just tweak that. For the failed and no outputs, I will make a new prompt and let the callee know that Kit will try to get a human to help. For the yes to revoking response, I will alter that message slightly. The final bit we need is a way of transferring a call to our business. We can do that with a call forwarding block. Let's grab and attach that. If we open it, we can see all we need to do is enter a phone number or even a SIP address. The last thing we need to do is hook up the outputs to the, to the successful call block. We can clean up the view by using the Align Graph button so it fits nice on our screen. So now we have our scenario hooked up. You might be asking, how do we make sure this all works? Well, that's easy. Kit has a built-in test function. Just move above and click on test. Select the number you want to use for the caller ID. Now to the phone number you want to call. You'll notice it automatically identifies any variables used. So just enter a name here and click start. We'll wait for a moment and we should hear the call come in. Notice how it shows where we are in the call flow. That way if there's an issue, you know where to fix any problems. Hello, is this Bob? Yeah, that's me. Hi, I am an automated system calling to let you know that Boxies is open again. Would you like to rebook your appointment? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, great. Just a moment while I have someone in the shop help book you. And now it should ring the transfer number. You'll hear a bit of echo since I'm talking to myself on two lines. Hi, Hi this, this is Boxies. 
and it worked as expected, so I'll hang up. Go ahead and test as many times as you need to to make sure all the branches are working with various inputs and modify as needed. Once you're happy with the result, click Publish. Now we finished that, let's set up the campaign. Clicking on the kit menu will take you back to the main console. The last step is to set up the auto dialer. Under the outbound screen, you should see the campaign we just created here. Now click on the campaigns tab and click create campaign. Here you can give the campaign a name. Select the scenario we just created and pick the caller ID you want to use from the number you just purchased or a verified number from earlier. When calling larger lists, you can select the number of simultaneous phone lines you want to use. If only one line is selected, Kit will go through your list one phone number at a time and will not start in the next number until the previous one is finished. You can speed this if needed by selecting multiple phone lines. In our test scenario here, we're forwarding to our business number, which only has one operator answer, just herself. We will keep this at one, but in usual call center scenarios, this would be something higher. In the schedule section, you'll see we have some timing options. We can set the campaign to start at a certain date and time. You can also specify time ranges during the day where it's okay to call. This is in the customer's local time zone, not the time zone of your business. On the right hand, you can see options for the number of times that Kit will attempt to call each phone number. If a call ends up in the end scenario without going through a successful call block, Kit will automatically recall it. This is helpful if you get busy or voicemail, but be careful not to upset your customers by calling too many times. You can also set a time interval between calling. The next tab is where you load your callee contact details. You will need a list of your contacts and any information you use as variables in a simple spreadsheet format. Box and Plan Kit uses this information to call your customers. At a minimum, your sheet needs to contain a list of phone numbers. In our case, we also use the name as a variable, so our sheet will need that. This is a simple example without many fields. Before you can proceed, you will need to confirm you are able to legally call the phone numbers on your list. If you have any questions, please consult your local regulatory body or legal representative. Oftentimes, you have many variables you want to use as part of your call and response logic. If you have many variables, we recommend downloading the template XLS file and populating this because it shows a column for every variable to find in your scenario. Note you will see a UTC column in the template sheet. If you are calling customers in multiple time zones, you can include the customer's time zone as a universal coordinated time offset in a UTC column. This field is matched to the working hours you specified in the previous tab. In this demo case, all the customers are in the same time zone and they did not include this column. Now click Next to go to the Map tab to verify the data. You can see here a snapshot of our data that lets us align the spreadsheet to our variable names. If your spreadsheet had more columns than needed by Kit, you can also set Kit to exclude some of them. Since I did not specify a time zone using the UTC column in my spreadsheet, I need to pick the proper time zone here. Make sure you have an Everything is Mapped before proceeding. The last tab is a summary of everything we just set up. Make sure to check everything. Depending on your settings, your campaign will start as soon as you hit start. If you're not ready, you can always go back and save it as a draft. Let's start our test with launch. As the calling proceeds, the campaign screen will show your progress. You can always come back to see how your campaign is doing or even download progress. When the campaign is done, you can also check out a summary report. And that's it. That's all you need to do to launch an automated outbound calling campaign with Vox Implant Kit. Make sure to check out the links in the description for more information and to get started.